Hey, Gobi here with a tip or two or a mechanic explanation on every unit in Star Rail. I've also asked for tips from experts of these units, such as Dreamy for Herta. If you like this video and have any other tips, let me know below and maybe consider subbing whilst you're at it. Also, thank all the tip contributors in the comments if you can and check out their stuff. Anyway, let's begin. Arlen. Arlen usually takes a sub DPS role and can therefore do okay damage at the cost of no skill points. What you can then do is basic attack whenever your main DPS needs skill points, which won't ruin his ultimate rotation too much, and this rotation will even be the same as usual provided you only basic ones. His ultimate at max talent buffing does decent damage, so if you really like Arlen he has some nice uses. Aster Aster's speed buff is not well understood. Aster's ultimate will provide speed to all allies for 2 turns. Messing this up can reduce its effectiveness by a ton or even ruin speed tuning. You'll want Aster to cast it when your slowest ally takes their turn, or just after if using Dance Dance Dance. The buff will be applied mid-turn, but this speed buff won't take down when ending their first turn. This means your whole team gains full effectiveness of her ultimate for two turns. Bailu. Bailu's revive can be a lifesaver in hard content and even saves you from a Memory of Chaos star from being lost. It won't work if you're crowd controlled though, so make sure to cleanse your Bailu or have enough effect resistance on her if you want to keep your team safe. Blade. We'll see this with a couple others, but Blade's skill has a funky extra turn mechanic. When you use your skill, he enters an extra turn state as his turn will not end. What this allows for is him to prolong buffs for one extra turn. He's supposed to have 3 turns worth of enhanced basic attacks, but including this turn he has 4 turns. The buff does not end after he takes action after using his skill, so we can abuse this to pile our DPS buffs on top of Blade after he uses his skill, but before he attacks. So Bronya's 2 turn ultimate duration just became a 3 turn one. Bronya. Team syncing is annoying, and there are many ways to play Bronya. You can go hyper speed, you can go just behind your DPS, you can go for something in between. In practice, a lot of random events occur and CC can mess up your rotation. Remember that Bronya's talent is a free advance forward, and using it can realign your DPS to act in front of Bronya. When hovering your basic attack on your turn, the action order will tell you where she will end up after her basic attack. Just be careful with speed buffs, it might actually end up being different when the turn comes. Clara. Clara is interesting and her tips are about understanding aggro and buff timing. Thanks to the Clara expert Ms. Tathy for this one. Making Clara's aggro higher is equivalent to a harmony buff for her specifically, as every hit on Clara translates into a counter attack. This aggro tip combines with the buff timing tip, which is that Clara should be buffed during enemy turns and not necessarily her own ones. This is why Slow Yukong works so great with her. Yukong will skill and or ult, allowing Clara to have these buffs during the enemy turns for massive counterattacks. Dan Hung Dan Hung's talent is quite finicky to use and mastering its uptime and usage is essential. When using a skill or basic attack on his action with his talent, it will take its natural 2 or 1 turn cooldown depending if you have E2 or not. If you ult at the start of his turn however, or outside of his turn, the cooldown will reset at the end of his next turn or after 1 turn without his E2. This means an ultimate and skill can be buffed in the same period as one skill would have been buffed in regular play. This is also why 4 piece wind isn't great on him, as you'll usually end up getting your ultimate near his turn due to ally energy gen or enemy hits. Dan Hung in Babatalune The VTuber form of Dan Hung One tip is that his ultimate can be buffered like any other unit's ultimate, except Lune buffs his damage percent and crit damage percent based on hits. So if you ultimate at the end of his action, he will have his max hit based buffs ready for all hits of his ultimate. This also works with E2 Lune just fine and he will still advance his action forward by 100% even if you buffed the ultimate. Jepard Jepard is one beefy boy, protecting his team with his aggro and shields. This tip comes from Edison's Maths Club, an exquisite Jepard enjoyer who has done Jepard DPS, shield and shield uptime calculations. Unlike Asta who can activate her ultimate on an ally's turn and should be prioritized on the slowest unit's turn, Jepard has to activate his ultimate after the end of the slowest unit's turn, as his shield will tick down if it's activated during an ally's turn. Herta Herta is a great mob clearer and with enough investment and supports can also smack up bosses. I consulted Dreamy the Herta God on this one, and you should check out that channel if you want to see awesome gameplay showcases. She thinks buff timing on Herta is key, for example timing all of Herta's damage during Yukong's skill ultimate combo. A Herta skill, ultimate and multiple follow ups will destroy content in the right scenario. Himigo Himigo is in the same state as Herta, where they're undervalued for their weaker single target damage, but again, supports and investment trivialize it. A tip for Himiko is that elites and bosses will actually grant 3 stacks of her passive rather than just one. 
so timing your talent activations with proper breaks is important, as you don't want to gain 3 stacks when you're only missing one. Hook Hook's talent is a great source of bonus damage and energy necessary for her max potential, and it requires burns on targets to activate. However, her skill applying burn won't activate it, so you'll need to apply burn beforehand. One thing though is that if she breaks using this skill, it will apply burn before the skill, and thus her talent can be activated. Another thing to know is her talent works with AoE, so her skill can technically generate 45 energy if she hits 3 burned enemies. Jin Yuan Jin Yuan's Lightning Lord depends on speed, and one mistake people make is putting him at 134 speed, specifically because the speed graph told you to do so. Lightning Lord is too chad to follow standard DPS rules, and 134 speed will only grant Jin Yuan a few extra turns over cycles, but that won't matter for Lightning Lord's speed and tuning. The general speed to aim for is 141 or 116 with Aster on the team, which is much more feasible. Kafka Abusing Kafka's talent can provide lots of additional damage as well as better shock uptime. Having your sustain be faster than her means they can basic on their first turn and allow Kafka to instantly have shock up for her first skill's detonation. This can then be combined with her signature speed ramp up. She will need that first turn of shock without her ultimate, but for subsequent waves, she can save her ultimate to immediately shock and detonate the whole wave. Luca. A tip for Luca is he isn't just a dot unit. With resolution equipped, 67% effect hit rate, and some nice speed, he is a skill point positive or neutral unit that can defense shred and apply vulnerability for many turns, whilst providing massive break damage versus physical weakness and okay damage if not. Don't forget he also has a buff to spell on his skill, so overall he provides similar utility to Pella. Of course, you won't just be replacing Pella though. Luwacha. Luwacha is kind of a cheat code, so you can't go wrong, but a tip for him is to consider multiplication. I talk about it in my guide, and it's a 3 star light cone, but there's no doubt that the passive is pretty beautiful. Every basic attack, which should be pretty much every turn of Luwacha's, you get a 20% advance forward. That's a 20% reduction in your total AV needed to take a turn. What this means is you only need 80% of your normal AV. So you need 10,000 action gauge to start your turn, and now only 8,000. 10,000 divided by 8,000 is 1.25, so you're effectively multiplying your speed by 1.25 times when using this light cone. For example, if we take 134 speed, giving us an AV of 75, and apply a 20% advance forward, we get 60 AV the next turn. 134 speed multiplied by our 1.25 times speed multiplier is 167.5 speed. Dividing 10,000 by this speed finds our new action value, which is just about 60, so the maths checks out. So a 3 star light cone can give us more power than speed boots if we are perma basic attacking. The base stats aren't too bad to worry about due to Luwacha's high base stats on himself and massive healing multipliers, and you can get some more emergency heals with these extra turns. March 7th. Munch can apply aggro with her skill shield provided the ally is above 30% HP. It is a strong aggro multiplier and will mean this ally gets attacked a lot more, synergizing with units like Blade and Clara. One thing to note though is for Blade, the shields will lose some damage, and for Clara, the Freezes loses her damage. A cool tip instead is to build into her Freezing Niche in another team comp instead. She can do a 2-3 turn rotation pretty easily, and it's a lot of fun. Natasha A tip on Natasha is her cool energy gains. Her specific light cone in general at S5 with Energy Rip and Von Wack can let Natasha ultimate every 3 turns with just basic attacks. It's a pretty insane min-max rotation, but it's really nice for solo sustaining with her. If not, you can go Energy Rope or HP Rope with her own light cone at other super impositions and do a 4 turn basic rotation. Pella A tip for Pella is that her talent doesn't need to be maxed. She's built to spam basics and her ultimate, and even if she uses her skill once in a while, you won't be using it twice, and so you shouldn't level your talent above 5 to 7. She can 2 turn ultimate with tutorial and talent level 7, or 3 turn with another light cone and talent level 5. If you 2 turn ult, a bonus tip is to run the win set, giving her many extra turns throughout the fight, and keeping a defense reduction and skill point generation at an all time high. Sing Shui Sing Shui has the same secret tech as Blade, where after scaling, you can activate ally buffing ultimates, and they will gain an additional effective turn of duration on Sing Shui, seeing as the turn she takes with her enhanced basic will not take down the buffs when they're applied. Of course, any future enhanced basics will make it take down, this is just for the first one. So you can use this to prolong OP buffs for more Gamba damage. A tip from free to play Tsing Shui is to use your ultimate before your enhanced basic. You do lose out on the hidden hand state, but Tsing Shui's power is all about using skill points, especially if you have her E4. If you ult before your enhanced basic, you'll keep your hidden hand state's buff, which is like 70% attack, on your ultimate, which is a massive buff. 
Sampo. A tip on Sampo is his wind shears are infinitely refreshable. Their cooldown is a lie and will only go away if you don't hit the enemy in any shape or form, which shouldn't be happening. Provided you attack the enemy, even with the basic, you will refresh your wind shear on a given enemy, allowing for Sampo to provide skill points without losing his main source of damage. Zela. The final secret check is Zela. As you're killing an enemy or as you're using her ultimate, you should use your ally ultimate buffs. She will enter her extra turn resurgent state, which just like Blade and Sing Shui, will not take down buffs applied during it. This is why she's so amazing with Bronya, but then again, uh, everyone is. Serval. Serval can extend any shocks with her ultimate. With great energy gains with her E2 for example, this means she can infinitely extend shocks. This also applies to break shocks. So any breaks from lightning allies can stay on the enemies forever. Nice for some break fun versus lightning weak. Furthermore, her talent doesn't need her to skill, so she can provide skill points, do nice damage, and extend shocks all in one. Silver Wolf. Silver Wolf's weakness in plant is dependent on the number of elements, not on the number of allies in a certain elemental type. This means in a team with four different elements, you have a 25% chance of applying each element, provided the boss isn't weak to them. If the boss is weak to one, for example, you now have a one in three chance of applying each element. It is one divided by the number of elements in your team that the boss isn't weak to. Also, when she skills with the weakness implant already on the enemy, it will remove that weakness before applying a new one, so you can't cheat the weakness implant. Su Shang. Su Shang's sword stance does not count as skill damage, so avoid things like subscribe for more on her. A tip for her is she can be a great skill point neutral DPS on any team at E1. If you mean DPS or anyone in the team breaks the weakness of the enemy, she can spam skill, providing great damage, great self buffs, and push forwards. She becomes her own buffer and a nice secondary damage dealer at the cost of no skill points when the enemy has no toughness bar. Ting Yun. Ting Yun's attack buff is limited by two factors, the character you're buffing's base attack and her total attack. She increases their attack at level 10 by 50% of their base attack, up to a cap of 25% of her total attack. So you take your unit's base attack, the value on the left of their stat page, and times it by 0.5 to find 50%. So to get this max buff, 25% of her total attack must be equal to this 50%. Therefore, you divide this number by 0.25 to find her total attack needs. Meaning at level 10 skill, you multiply your base attack by 2 to find her total needed attack. The same formula works for different talent levels by replacing the percentages. At 1000 base attack, this is 2000 attack needed on Ting Yun. Remember though that not dying is more important than maxing out her attack buff, so prioritize tank stats too. By Trailblazer. Trailblazer has weak shields, but they're consistent and interjectable. Combined with the only true way of guaranteeing an enemy hits you and large damage reduction, their utility is quite interesting and strong. One strong suit in particular is the monkey enemy, where they can taunt and make sure no ally gets hit unless you mess up something. They also have great front loaded break damage due to the fire break multiplier, so they're great with their enhanced basics at dispersing weak enemies, as well as with their ultimate. It's called Trailblazer. For the uh, three or so players that still run this character, she does a lot of break damage. She does 60 on the single target and 30 to adjacent on her skill, and then she can do 60 to all enemies hit on her ultimate. If you're versus physical weak in the early game and you haven't got, for example, Clara, physical trailblazer can actually carry you versus physical weak. There aren't really much mechanics to explain for her though, I would just look at her break damage because of how strong physical break is. And you'll probably be maxing the trailblazer anyway because of all the different paths you can get, so ideally they will be level 80 and so their break damage will be actually quite high. Welt. Welt can support your team or carry your team, and a tip for him is to run Energy Rope until E2. It improves his base rotations by a ton, and even lets him get a 4 turn rotation whilst being skill point positive. For DPS, well, it gives him a 3 turn rotation, for a lot more utility and a lot of AoE damage. An extra tip is to not run him versus Imprison or CC immune enemies. It hurts his kid a lot outside of pure DPS well. Yan Qing Yan Qing's gameplay is all about keeping his Soul Steel Sync buff. This means using his skill. However, if for whatever reason you don't have skill points anymore, you can actually keep his buff provided you chain an ultimate right after it. It's a weird interaction that will let you keep your high burst damage for the next turn. Yukong. Yukong was quite controversial near release since people assumed she should just go fast and skill spam. But a tip on her is she has many different great rotations that you should look into, and she can save skill points to provide large burst turns instead of consuming your skill points. Furthermore, a slow Yukong, that's a Yukong built to be slower than all of your teammates, alongside a fast DPS like a hunt unit or any DPS with E2 Bronya, 
will allow this DPS to get all your buffs without the need to speed Shin Yukong to be faster than them, since her stacks will carry on throughout the fight until the DPS takes their turn. Anyway that's all the tips we have for today, but if you have any extra tips let people know below and consider subbing for more HSR content if you like this video. We have a Himiko guide, a Welt guide, Fushuan guide, Lynx guide all coming up, so you know, be there. Thanks to all my amazing members, thank you all for watching and have a go day.